Hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be going through Unit 4, Predicting Chemical Formulas from Mass Ratios. This goes along with worksheet number 3 that we've been working on, and you should have that worksheet out and be looking along with it as we move through it. Well, these are the two hypotheses that scientists had about the mass of atoms. They really didn't know whether all elements had the same mass, like in this one right here, hypothesis number one. Uh, then if they had more mass, then they'd have to have more atoms. Or was it hypothesis number two, which said that different elements have different masses, and it's a characteristic property of that element. Well, what we found out as we worked through this together was on number one on this worksheet, that when we found the mass of oxygen to the mass of carbon, that ratio, it was for compound A, 1.33. Now that means 1.33, and we could say grams of oxygen, for every one gram of carbon. And for B, it was 2.66, or 2.66 grams of oxygen for every one gram of carbon. Now obviously, these two are not the same compound, because if they were the same compound, they would have the same ratio of oxygen to carbon. No matter how much of the compound you have, the ratio stays the same. So we determined, according to hypothesis one, that if this was 1.33 oxygen to carbon, then we put that in a fraction, uh, um, something fraction, a, what's it called? A uh, improper fraction. The 1.33 is four thirds, or four oxygens for every three carbons, if they all had the same mass. And B would be eight-thirds, this 2.66 is eight-thirds, or eight oxygens for every three carbons. So then that would lead us to say that the formula for this one right here, the four-thirds, would be three carbons and four oxygens, or C3O4. This one would be three carbons, to eight oxygens, or C3O8. That says eight right there. Those are fairly ugly numbers, or very ugly ratios, and so we're looking for the simplest ratio. So then when we look at hypothesis number two down here, and we if we assume that this is the ratio right here, 1.33 grams of oxygen for every one gram of carbon, then we would have to write that as the simplest ratio that we could have, which is a one-to-one -one ratio right here, but we would have to show that the oxygen is 1.33 times more massive than carbon. So this is a little particle diagram. One point th this is supposed to be about 1.33 times bigger than this carbon, which would show a different mass. And B, on the other hand, then, since this has 2.66 or two times more oxygens than this one does, because you can see that this is twice as big as the A is. That means it has twice the mass of oxygen. This is still going to have the same size oxygen, 1.33 times greater than the carbon, but it's going to have two of them, because mass is a characteristic property of that element. We can't draw this one as 2.66 times greater, because it'd be different from this oxygen over here. And if it's a characteristic property, then it has to be the same mass for oxygen every time. And finally, on this page, we see that the formula for this guy right here is one carbon and one oxygen, CO. This has got one carbon and two oxygens, CO2. And you can see that's a lot simpler or more simple than this is and than this is. So we're going to go with hypothesis number two, and we're going to take that hypothesis one, and we're going to say, nope, that one is not the most simple form. Hypothesis number two is going to be our most simple form. That's what we're going to go with. So here's another problem, our first problem that we're looking at here together on this video. And so if we have a compound A, and don't know what this compound is, but we know it has oxygen and nitrogen, but so does compound B. But you can see that they have different ratios of oxygen and nitrogen, which tells me that they are not going to be the same compound. The first thing that we have to do is we have to find the mass ratio of oxygen to nitrogen. Very easy to do. For each compound, you just take the mass of oxygen, like this right here, divide it by the mass of nitrogen. And then just record those, those fractions, or those factors, that is, in decimal and the correct number of sig figs. So do that now. Mass of oxygen for each one divided by mass of nitrogen. 
Okay, so I just plugged those in my calculator, and for A, I got 1.14. For B, I got 2.25. So then we want to know how does B compare to A? How do the ratios compare? And so when we look at those, we see that B is definitely bigger than A, but how much bigger? It's right around two times bigger. So this is really important that we write this this way. So I'm going to say that B has two times, and maybe we'll say around two times, more. And what does it have more of? we got to look up here. This is really saying, this factor is saying, 1.14 grams of oxygen for every 1 gram of nitrogen and 2.25 grams of oxygen for every 1 gram of nitrogen. So B is going to have 2 times more oxygen than A is going to have. So we can write that in there. B has about 2 times more oxygen than A. Very important for us to look at when we're looking at hypothesis number 2, which is saying that the, the uh, masses, elements have different masses, and it's a characteristic property of that element. So now we're going to do a particle diagram for each of these, and we're going to assume that this ratio, the smallest ratio right here, is about how they match up. This is one point, the oxygen is 1.14 times more massive than the nitrogen, and we're going to say that's a one-to-one -one ratio that for one oxygen, it's going to be 1.14 times bigger. So here's the way I'm going to draw them. I'm going to put my oxygen, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than my nitrogen. Not really much bigger, but I'm going to draw a little arrow right here saying that this is my oxygen. First of all, I'll put that it's O, and then I'm going to say it's 1.14 times the nitrogen. And maybe I'll do a little line right here saying that this is nitrogen. And then I can get my formula for this. The simplest formula for this is just going to be NO. And then I can do that same thing over here for B. But B says it is 2.25 times bigger. Now, we can't draw 2.525 times bigger. Still got to be that 1.14 times. And But now, since I have right here our big information B has about two times more oxygen than A that means that my nitrogen right here and then I have another oxygen that shows two times the oxygen and so again I could say here that this is 1.14 times bigger times more than the N is and our chemical formula for this then is going to be NO2 because this was my N in the blue, and the pink was the oxygen. One more thing here, too, is sometimes the ratios just don't compare just as nice as you would want them to, like a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1 ratio. Instead, um, if we had just this X and Y, and I just made up some numbers for compound A, here's compound A and compound B, and let's say the ratios we got were 3.15, in 4.73 now that's not twice as much as this and so when we find out how do the ratios compare what we need to do is you need to take that bigger one divided by the smaller one so the 4.73 over 3.15 to see what we get for the ratio so 4.73 divided by 3.15 is going to give us uh, 1.50 is the ratio now what that's saying is 1.50 X's in the B compared to the X's in the A. So remember what we did right here. We did B divided by A. And so this is the number of X's that we had because it was X's to Y's. The Y's were the same. So this is for B over A. It's 1.50 X's in B over 1 X in A. But the problem is that we got this 1.50 and that's an odd number. We can't have half of an atom. And so what we have to do is we have to make both of these um, sorry, this is the B right here, X is in B over 1 X and A. So we have to make both of them a whole number. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both of those times 2 and we get 3 X's in the B for every 2 X's and the A. So just again one more time, this was 
the reason why we're saying x's is because it was x on top, the y's were all 1, so we did the x's of b over the x's of a, and we got 1.5 x's in b to every 1 x in a. To make it a whole number, we multiply by 2, and we get 3 x's in b for every 2 x's in a, so here's what it's going to end up looking like. So we have, for compound a, we're going to have 2 x's, so it's going to be something like x to y. And for compound B, we're going to have three x's. So for B, for B it's going to be x, three, y. Or the other way around, y, x, two, y, x, three. Okay, I hope this helps. Um, then if you need some extra help on some of these, then you need to stop in and we'll go through some of them. Have a great day.